Hi, welcome to In a Pickle Knitting. My name is Donna and today is Vlogtober 28, October 28th, 2018. I'm coming to you from Manassas, Virginia with a short little vlog that includes a children's literature book for the season and then a craft. So, and today's is a, a recipe rather than a craft. So the story today is called The Biggest Pumpkin Ever, written by Stephen Kroll. And this book um, I've had since 1988. It is a favorite Halloween story. It is the story of two little mice. Clayton is a house mouse and he's out during the day. And Desmond is a field mouse and he's out during the night. And unbeknownst to each other, they both have spied a pumpkin in the pumpkin field that they want to nurture. Um, Clayton would like to make it the largest pumpkin so that he can win the town's pumpkin contest and Desmond wants to make the biggest jack-o-lantern and um, for Halloween night. So each one goes about uh, watering and fertilizing and ultimately even adding um, sugar so that the sugar water so that the pumpkin will grow big and it does it grows bigger than the car or truck and then bigger than the house and it's just huge and um, it's getting closer to fall and one night there's an early frost so they're each out setting blankets over the top of the pumpkin to keep it warm when they meet each one another and um, listeners are afraid you know they're going to get into some kind of a squabble but they both uh, laugh about the situation and decide they can actually work together and manage to get that very very large pumpkin into town and um, it still can be carved for the biggest jack-o-lantern so they do um, win the blue ribbon from the mayor and they help one another to carve it out. And on Halloween, there it sits atop the hill where you can see it for miles around. So this is the biggest pumpkin ever, a really sweet story. And today's craft, I am making, or recipe, I am making some cupcakes. They are snickerdoodle cupcakes. And I am pl putting a buttercream frosting on top with a little embellishment. So um, in the beginning, I have a little baking helper or baking buddy, but um, we had a little mishap need to be cleaned up. And in that, during that time, he found something that interested him more than the baking, and he moved on, uh, which was actually helpful. So um, here we have some cupcakes. Um, if I uh, don't talk to you at the end and um, let me say wish you a, a nice evening and I hope to see you back again tomorrow. Bye! Room temperature milk one and a quarter cups. We're going to need two teaspoons of vanilla. We need two teaspoon, no one tablespoon of cinnamon, one tablespoon of baking powder, half teaspoon of salt, a total of three cups of flour, but you need um, one and a half cups of cake flour, one and a half cups of all-purpose flour. We need one and three quarter cups of granulated sugar, two sticks of softened butter, and I'm only showing two, but you need four eggs. And um, I think that's it for our ingredients right now. Um, four, four eggs actually. Uh, then you're gonna need a- uh, One, two, uh, one cup of eggs. Well, how, and, how many do we have, though? Uh, two. Four. Four cup of eggs. Mm -hmm. Well, four eggs, and I put them in cups. Four eggs. And what else do we need? Uh, we need mitts and a bowl and them and the that. Okay, those are our liners. The recipe the yields 28, it says, but um, I'm only going to do 24. I did the... So first, we're going to line the muffin tins with some liners. You want to take some for that and I'll do this one. Mine are done. One more. And there you go. Okay, so we're going to set this aside, all right? The next step is to cream the butter and sugar. So the butter's in here. Now, Cooper, you need to pour the sugar into that big mixing bowl. Okay. 
Okay, can you pour it in? Oh. Oopsie, a little heavy? Duh. Yeah, no. Okay, Look. it's okay. So we're gonna use the electric mixer and we're gonna we're going to um, cream the butter and sugar together until it's light and fluffy, and that's gonna take quite a while. Now that our butter and sugar have been creamed together, we are going to add eggs one at a time. So Cooper, can you pick up, put your whisk down, pick up the little cup of eggs and carefully pour it in the bowl. Okay, now we're gonna cream them one. Um, mix them together one at a time. Okay. First egg incorporated. So Cooper, we're ready for the second egg. Careful. Good job. Now I do that. Okay, let's add our third egg. And we are scraping down the sides with a spatula to make sure that everything is in there. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the mixer on this time. We've got the cup empty. Thank you. Let's just get that so we can see it going. Tell, tell me when you think it's no no hands. Tell me when you think it's ready for me to for us to add that last egg. Hmm. It's way to add that last egg. Maybe just a little tiny bit more. Eh, no. Mm, a little more. Ah. Okay, we're ready for the fourth egg. Like the door pop. Yeah. Like the fourth pumpkin. Okay, now Cooper, you're gonna pour in the two teaspoons of vanilla. That is. And we're gonna that incorporate is, that. I melt it and it melts yummy. It does. What does it smell like? Uh. It's vanilla. The vanilla. Now we're gonna set this mixture aside and work on blending our dry ingredients together. Using a really large bowl here just because he's gonna whisk and I don't want it all over everywhere. But we're gonna start by adding our flours, which is um, three total cups, a half cup of all-purpose flour and a half cup of cake flour. Now to that, we're gonna add the cinnamon. So Cooper, there's our two, our one tablespoon of cinnamon. I, I melt it and it melt. Yummy. It does. Cinnamon is, yeah. Get it a little farther over. Just put it in the middle of the bowl. Okay? There you go. And then we have a tablespoon of baking powder. Same thing. Put it in the middle. Baking All right? powder. There you go. Powder. Baking powder. And our half teaspoon of salt. And some salt. Yummy. Oh, it's going to my hand too. Okay, a little bit won't hurt. Okay, now we're gonna whisk it together. The directions in this recipe say to sift, but I find if you use a whisk I, through um, a I sieve, whisk, it'll work just fine. I can so, whisk it. Oh, he wants to it. use his own. We did wash it. Okay, so you're gonna whisk and it's gonna go through to the bottom. Whisk, whisk, whisk. So now we're going to, in three batches, mix in our milk and our flour mixture here. We're gonna do start with flour and end with flour. So we'll start by adding some is, flour is to our butter water? sugar mixture. No, there's nothing in there, it's just empty. It's just in. May I put it down? Okay. Okay, let me move it over a little bit. I have mine. Okay, just be sure you get it all the way in the pan in the bowl. Next time I'm going to get a mold potch. Okay, let me just add the rest of I'm that. I'm just going to get a mold potch. Okay, we've mixed in the first half of the milk. We're going to add some more of our um, dry ingredients. Well, we had a little mishap and my helper got bored and is on his way to another activity right now. So we have incorporated all of the flour and the milk. I'm going to be using a, an ice cream scoop to scoop up... Um, enough batter for each 
one that they're about two thirds full and then we're going to bake in the 350 degree oven. So let me get those all scooped up. All right, they are all um, in the liners. This is my leftover batter. I think I might have gotten two more, but I don't think I would have gotten four more. The recipe says to bake for 20 minutes and to rotate them halfway through. I never rotate because I feel like you lose heat from your oven and um, my oven then when it starts to reheat um, over does it with the heat. So. I tend not to open the door at all. I'm going to test them or check on them visually at about 18 minutes and then um, I will do the toothpick and if it comes out clean, then I'll take them out, let them cool on a wire rack and then in the pan and then take them out of the pan and let them continue until to cool on the wire rack until they're really cool, an hour or so. For our buttercream frosting today, we're going to make a single batch, which would normally frost about 18 cupcakes. So you can double it if you have more to frost. I have 24, but if I only frost 18, that would be fine. You're gonna start with half a cup of very soft butter, a 16 ounce package of powdered sugar or confectioner's sugar. And if you um, have it already poured out, that's about four cups. You're going to need one teaspoon of vanilla extract. You can use different flavors, but it's not always a teaspoon. For instance, almond, I like to use, but it's more of a half teaspoon of almond. So you'll have to adjust that amount. And you need um, to start with about a third of a cup of milk, or you can use heavy cream. That makes the creamiest. But if you don't have it, milk works just fine. And we're gonna start by um, beating this um, butter until it gets quite a bit lighter in color. The butter's been whipped up there and it's uh, getting white, so we're gonna start adding uh, small amounts at a time of the confectioner's sugar. Um, you may, If you're using a mixer like this, you may wanna place the dish towel over the top of it because this stuff flies everywhere. And even when you start on um, really slow speed, I find I get it everywhere like that butter. It's not easy to film while you're trying to cook. The first addition of powdered sugar and the beaters are still turning very easily. So um, I will continue to add. When it starts to be uh, a thicker mixture, just start adding little bits at a time. Some of your liquid. Um, I usually wait till maybe halfway to add the flavoring. Um, I would start with the milk or the cream. I'm gonna add a little bit of milk here. And you can see when you do that, it starts to turn so much easier, and then that way you can continue to add more of the sugar. I have split the icing into approximately two equal halves. I was planning to color them two different colors. I'm going to use some orange food, food coloring powder, which is very concentrated. And this is um, what I'm using here. It's by Loran and it's just powdered food coloring. It's nice because it doesn't change the consistency by adding anything liquid to it. So I'll make this one orange. And then um, I don't have a yellow in the powder, so I'm gonna use a Wilton uh, gel in uh, yellow color. Because it's kind of hard to read anything on that, isn't it? Lemon yellow. So I have a yellow. Um, I think that I did with the Welton gel color and I have this orange that I did with the Loran powdered color and I'm going to put um, use these disposable bags to fill yellow in one and orange in the other and then I'm going to put both bags down inside of a larger pastry bag um, to do my icing. The two disposable bags are filled. I've not cut the tips off yet. I'm going to put, I have um, the first part of the device here that goes in here that you screw this on afterwards. I have that in there and once I get these through the end, I'll cut them off. Okay, we're gonna try and decorate these and tighten the bag and start on the outside 
There we go. We're going to make some little acorns here to garnish the top of the cupcake. And I'm using Hershey Kisses. I'm using mini chocolate chips. I'm using the mini vanilla wafers, which are these. And I've melted some chocolate over a double boiler. I'm going to be using a popsicle stick to um, get the chocolate for glue and the end of a toothpick. So we just start with the vanilla wafer, put a little chocolate on the vanilla wafer, add the Hershey's Kiss, flip it over, and then this time use the end of the toothpick. Add that mini chocolate chip and let it cool and you have a little acorn.